Hey there, I'm estate planning attorney Paul Rabelais, and in this video here, we're going to talk about what you can do to avoid family conflict in the settlement of your estate. So family conflict, it is the biggest threat to your estate. Sure, there's a number of other threats. There's the tax threat, there's the market volatility threat, but family conflict, it's the big one. Let me tell you how I know it's the big one. I've been making these videos for years. Perhaps you've seen other videos of mine. And if you look in the description of the video, you'll see where I, I enable people to click a link and schedule a 15 or 30 minute call with me to talk about their particular estate situation. But I only allow it for people who have a connection with the state where I am an estate planning lawyer, which is Louisiana. And so when I first started making those, making myself available for the calls, and I would call people at the, at the scheduled time, and about 75% about of those scheduled calls went something like this. Mr. Rabelais, my fill in the blank, uh, my blank died, could be mother, father, stepmother, stepfather, aunt, uncle, grandmother, brother, sister, friend. My blank died and what they're doing with that estate, it's just not fair and it's not right. What, what rights do I have? And under my breath, I'm thinking, well, what right you have is what, you know, is you go hire a lawyer and spend a small or large fortune on that lawyer and try to, you know, resolve it through the court system. And then uh, regardless of whether or not it gets resolved, you and those um, family members that you're having conflict will never ever speak to one, one another again. That's what you can do. So when they tell me about what their you know, potential conflict is in this settling of the estate after somebody died, you know, I'll always tell them it's just my nature, it's my business. I always say, you know, you're, you're asking the wrong guy. My personal business and, and my role and, and what I do for a living is not to get people like you out of this mess that you're in. I'm in the business of helping people plan ahead so that you don't get in this mess. So um, just another, and, and I make that clear on the scheduling software that I have. So if you are in the middle of a complete mess and there's conflict and you know, the typical things I hear is so-and-so won't, you know, so-and-so is the executor, he won't return my calls. Um, so-and-so is interpreting the documents this way, which is wrong. and and they're not being fair. If, if that's you, don't schedule a call with me. I'm not your guy to get you out of that mess. I'm the guy that helps families plan it all ahead and communicate things properly so those messes are avoided. So also, if you think that family conflict uh, may not be the biggest threat to the settling of your estate, then you might wanna take a look at some of the comments in any of the hundreds of videos that I've made because many of those comments are people saying, uh, saying something to the effect of, I'm in the middle of conflict, what can I do? So this, the rest of this video is addressed on things that you can do proactively to avoid conflict in the settling of your estate. Hint number one, it's likely to take some work and it's likely to take some effort. And quite frankly, it may even be at first a bit uncomfortable because losing loved ones is difficult. Talking about what happens when a loved one is gone can be even tougher. So one of the keys is, is to start a dialogue early. Uh, that failure to communicate, that failure to dialogue may be, you know, it is what leads to, uh, leads the most to this estate malfunction. Now, in addition to the communication, which I'm gonna come back to, you also have to nail two other things in the, you know, all of that legal documentation while, while the, you know, you'll hear all about wills, trusts, powers of attorney, healthcare, living wills. There, there's two main things in your estate documentation that you just gotta get right to avoid family conflict. I'm gonna come back to communication, but those two things are, number one, the beneficiary and heir designations. And number two, I'm gonna call it, and I'm gonna explain it here in a minute, the fiduciary designations. So let's talk about your beneficiary designations. 
Uh, not just talking about the beneficiary designations that you make on your IRA and life insurance, but the oh, anywhere where you can designate who gets something, you gotta nail that right. Sometimes it's just flat out written incorrectly, it's written wrong, or it's subject to different interpretation. And again, that could be in, in wills or in trusts or on financial account information, such as IRAs, life insurance, annuities, all those things take monitoring as the family circumstances change, but there's nothing that can cause more family conflict than having all of that wording and having all of that legal documentation um, not be what it should be based on your personal circumstances. And in addition to that, you know, another, uh, sometimes other um, designation of heirs or beneficiaries is really that causes family conflict is perhaps when an inheritance is left outright when it should be left in trust or left in trust when it should be left outright. So, um, so, so sometimes um, that reason that it was designated a certain way isn't, isn't communicated and that causes a problem. Well, more on communication in a minute. The other legal, you know, legal documents aspect that causes a lot of conflict is, is what I call the fiduciary, big word, fiduciary designation. So I, I hear a lot, Mr. Rabelais, um, mama did her will about 10 years ago. She died about six months ago. And when she did her will, my brother got her to do it. My brother brought her to the lawyer's office. And, you know, my, uh, and as a result of that, mama named named my brother as the executor. And now that mama died, he doesn't do a damn thing. He doesn't call, he doesn't, uh, doesn't return my calls. I texted him three times yesterday, I got no response. I don't know what he's doing with the money. So sometimes when it's inappropriate, uh, one child is put in charge of another child's inheritance or one child is put in charge of settling an estate. And sometimes that leads to resentment or anger. So you gotta make sure you, you know address all of those fiduciary dog designations, and there's a bunch of them that people typically make. So some of those fiduciary designations, fiduciary means somebody who's being put in a position to do stuff for you or for others. So I'll give you a few of those fiduciary designations. If you're a parent with minor children, if you're watching this video, you may not be, but if you are, you'll be designating who those backup parents for the children will be, who will manage the children's inheritance until they're older. But uh, even, you know, um, even seniors and retirees make a lot of fiduciary designations. It's when you're incapable, who handles your money? When you're incapable, who handles your medical decisions? When you die, who's in charge of settling the estate? And that designation could be titled an executor or a trustee, depending upon the mechanism through which you leave your estate to others. And there's all kinds of decisions to make. Do you name one executor or trustee? Do you name multiple? If you name multiple, do they work together? Does a majority rule? Should you name a, an heir as a fiduciary? So a lot of, lot of stuff goes into that. Some, sometimes those decisions are just made real quick without a lot of forethought. But you know, um, improper fiduciary designation is a cause for a lot of family conflict. All right, so back to the communication. The, the communicating while you're alive and while you're well is, is important, particularly if you recognize the potential for underlying family conflict. So usually when I'm sitting across the table, I'll, I'll ask people, do you, do you envision there being family conflict you know, when you pass away? And sometimes people uh, correctly state, nope, uh, children get along great, and it winds up that way. Sometimes people say, I, I can guarantee you there's going to be family conflict. So-and-so already said they're going to challenge the will. And then sometimes it's kind of an in-between answer. Well, we're not really sure. You know, our, our daughter's husband, he is very angry. He's an angry person and, and uh, he doesn't get along with his brother-in-law. And, you know, I hear all the stories. So uh, that communication is really important. Now, now, what should that communication be? Well, that's really, you're the best one to determine what's the best way to communicate what you're, what you're doing, what your thoughts are, what your expectations of people are, what their roles are. That communication can be a talk. Maybe it's a talk that you have only once with your family. Maybe it's a talk that you have periodically. Maybe you have it every year at Thanksgiving. Maybe you have it every three years. 
Maybe you write a letter to your heirs and maybe they read it while you're alive. Maybe it's set aside for them to read it after you pass away, but you're letting every know, everyone know what their roles and expectations are. So one thing I've found is that every, every circumstances is, diff is different, but I, I, I do feel that that primary breadwinner may have to let go of some secrecy, even though it may feel a bit unnatural because that, that buy-in that you can get from communicating with those participants in your estate settlement, that buy-in that you get may be exactly what is needed to avoid family conflict in the future. Okay, so I feel, I feel really strong. There's, I need some help and, I, and I'd love for this video to, to make a difference in some bodies or some families' lives and I can really judge whether it made a difference by asking you to do me a favor. One, I'm gonna kinda challenge you uh, to communicate with this channel in the comments below either, either what you've done to, in, an, in an effort to avoid family conflict in the future or even in the comments below you could put what you plan to do or what you're going to do to avoid family conflict in the future. And I hope that, that people will reply to your comments and may put some thoughts into your head and you might say, hey, that's a good idea, I'm gonna take advantage of that. And then if you feel like you've done nothing and you don't plan to do anything to avoid family conflict, maybe put a prior experience where you saw maybe in your family or in a friend or another family, they did something to um, proactive to avoid family conflict or maybe they didn't do something and it caused family conflict. So just put that experience that you've seen in the family below in the, in the comments below. It seems like everybody has a story on a on a bad estate settlement. So I'm trying to get you to share some of that just so this video and this channel can make a difference. And then, uh, you know, we'll take a look at, at that as we go along. And if you're up for it, feel free to smash the like button. Also hit the uh, subscribe button and the notification bell. That way you don't miss anything. We'll see you next time.